Welcome back to another After Work Special. My name is Garrett and this is Mojo Manufacturing. So this weekend I made these things. I made four more, two with the actual mojo in there, and then two just regular, so if anybody wants those that are like personal engraved or anything like that. But let me tell you something, since I changed how thick it was going to be, how I mentioned last video, boy did I run into problems, multiple, different occasions, but we got it figured out. So as of now, I'm going to do two coordinate systems. I'm going to have a G54 and a G55. This is the first one I've ever done and I'm pretty excited to try it out. For now, I'm just going to find that each time I run both of these together. So, I mean, it's going to suck. I'll have to pull out the Heimer each cycle, but hopefully at some point I can get those, uh, the stops that come up from the side here. I can get two of them come up from this side and stop right here, come up from this side and stop right here. So we can have G54 and G55 every single time and it's on every time. So for now, I just put that paint mark there to sort of show the middle where I should put these. I want a quarter of an inch between these two so I can fit, well, just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch so I can fit the quarter inch end mill or ball nose end mill can fit down in there if it needs to go down there, which it will. If anybody might be wondering, to get this G55 right here on the Tormach screen, it's kind of glary. You just put in here G55, hit enter, and it's there. Like if I hit G54, Boom, now it says G54. And if anybody might not know what that is, it is basically the coordinate system. I have two coordinate systems now that I'm going to put. One zero is going to be on this edge and this top, and one zero is going to be on this edge and this top. They should both be the same Z, though. That was by far one of the scariest things that has happened to me. I am an idiot to think that that would have worked. I still had to use the shear hog. I was thinking, oh, I'll just have the uh, quarter inch end mill go in between here. No, I have this giant three quarter inch madman trying to run through there. Of course it wouldn't work. But here's the aftermath. Just pulled right up out of the vise. That was insane. On the plus side, I got a little bit of a multiple work coordinates system work, I guess. I got to figure out what that was like, so that, that's pretty cool. So for now, we're just going to run this guy right here. So after the first operation on the first one right here, because we took the other one out, we have these lines right here, and I believe it got itself all knocked off of coordinates, whatever. It might have skipped a step on the stepper motors when it plunged the, the shear hog and flung that other one out. So what I did to fix the problem was create a finer step down with the shear hog. So each time the tool steps down to take off more material, it's even finer now so it takes off more material so the end mill, the ball nose end mill doesn't have to take off nearly as much. And at this point I didn't realize that flat area detection was not on within Fusion 360. So flat area detection detects those flat areas that it's milling right now. So you need to check that in order to mill off those flat areas perfectly flush. So I did that later on in the weekend and that helped a ton. And by the end of it, it looks like we were able to save this one. So this is my new GoPro mount that I want to mount inside the machine while it's running. It uses those neodymium magnets and I really just wanted to see how good it would work with the vibration of the machine, especially with the shear hog going. And it looks okay, there's no there's no real amount of like shaking that's, that I can see right now, but it worked out pretty good I think. Just a piece of aluminum with those magnets on there and it was awfully hard to glue those magnets on there because they just kept wanting to slide together. When in the end, I just let them go all together and I put a bunch on there, so it looks like it worked out okay. I thought this was something worth mentioning here. I had 
an absurd amount of tool pull out when I ran the second one. And I just put this one in there and let it go for a few minutes and then I heard some awful sounds. So here's where you can see where it went really deep right there. The shear hog pulled out probably an eighth of an inch and was just destroying this thing. <laughs> And then that caused other problems after I tried to fix that problem. So I went in there to tighten up the collet that holds the tool holder in. So I tightened down the draw bar here. And to do that I took out this pin right here and I swung out this cylinder for the power draw bar. And when I did that I put this back, I forgot to put the pin in, and I heard some awful sounds coming from just like a bunch of ticking noises. And then I, I stopped the machine, checked everything, couldn't find out what was going on with it. I ended up taking this cover off. I thought something was clicking as the ball screws were turning. And then I figured out, I looked on my bench and saw this pin here. And I was like, oh, okay, that's the problem. So I put that pin back in and then after that, let it rip. So that was about 20 minutes waste of my time. In the end, we got all four of these done this weekend. And I sort of wanted to put it up on my website uh, just for some of the guys that had asked on the Facebook group to that they wanted to purchase them So I wanted to see that's why I made these two that aren't engraved some people said they wanted their special engravings Obviously those will cost more because I'll have to put that back in the machine and do its special engraving or whatever But I was very proud to have all these all these done this weekend It's just at least something's coming along I guess but I, I was pretty happy with with what I got accomplished this weekend <laughs>